This video explains how to compute the persistent homology associated to this sequence of simplicial maps. So there are four spaces, rather small one, with a ver single vertex, and another single vertex over here, and two other CW complexes. And I'm telling you how the maps operate. So it's not quite a simplicial map in the simplicial complex sense, but basically I'm telling you where the vertices are and the edges come along for the ride. Okay, so we want to compute the persistent homology of this particular sequence of cellular maps. Now, how do they work? We need to write out the chain complexes for each of these spaces and then fit them together along the cellular maps. So associated to this particular space, there's not a very big chain complex. How many different dimensions are in play here? Well, really, there's dimension zero for the vertices, dimension one for the edges, and there are no two faces, so they don't really come into the matter. So in dimension one and in dimension zero are really the only things that are interesting. Associated to this space x3, there are no edges, and there is one vertex. Associated to this space, there are two edges, two vertices. Associated to this space, there are four edges and three vertices. And associated to this space, like this one, there are no edges and one vertex. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to write out what the boundary maps are. Now in this case here, this is clearly a zero map, this is clearly a zero map, there's no options there. But for this one here, it's going to be a two by two matrix, two columns, two rows. This is going to be a three by four matrix, three rows, four columns, and of course, no options here. Now, in order to write down these, you need orientations. Let's supply some orientations. Doesn't matter what they are exactly, so long as you pick them and you're consistent. Let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the ends of the edges with a plus or a minus to tell you the orientation. You can do this any way I like. Let me put a plus here, plus here, minus, and minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. It's convenient if you make these particular edges and these particular edges match up in orientation because that's what the cellular map is going to do. It's going to take one edge to the other. Similarly marked there. Okay, so now given those choice of orientations, I can fill out this matrix, this two by two matrix, and this three by four matrix. Now I should label the rows and columns so I don't get confused. The rows are labeled by vertices, by vertices, bigger, and the columns are labeled by edges. Okay, so now I just fill them in. Now in this case here, both edges connect to both vertices, so I drop in pluses and minuses according to what I see up there. So edge zero, when I look at it in terms of V zero, it gets a minus, and when I look at it edge 0 with v1 it's a plus and similarly edge 1 with v0 gets a minus edge 1 with v1 gets plus okay so much for that boundary map now to this one okay edge 0 with v0 gets a minus and a plus it's not connected at all to vertex 2 similarly for edge 1 for edge 2 well, it comes to V0 with a plus, and to V2 with a minus, and does not connect to vertex number one, and similarly for the other. Okay, so those are the various boundary maps in play. So now let's take a look at the homology spaces associated to this particular diagram. Now, certainly the kernels of these boundary maps, this is boundary zero for this space, boundary zero for this space, etc. The kernels are all everything in this case. 
The images are what we've got going on here. So the only thing that really can go wrong is, is that these may not have full rank. Now, it's pretty easy to see what the rank of each of these matrices are. So the rank of this matrix here is pretty clearly 1. You can just column reduce or row reduce, and I'll get either a row of columns of 0. The largest rank this could possibly be is 3. But if I do a column reduction, I can get rid of this column, and similarly a column reduction on this one. And then I'm left with two linearly independent columns, so the rank of this is 2. OK, so now I can write down all of the homology spaces associated to these various spaces. So let me just tabulate my results here. So H1 of X3, H0 of X3. Dividing line here, so we'll want induced maps in a bit. H1 of x2, H0 of x2, H1 of x1, H0 of x1, H1 of x0, and H0 of x0. Okay. Now we just noticed this year the kernel of this particular map boundary map is everything, all of R. The image is nothing, so R modulo nothing gives me what H0 is, so that's R. Now, over here, we what's the kernel of this map? Well, the kernel is nothing, but there's really nothing there, so this is 0. Similarly for the other end. Okay, so the only interesting activity is in the middle. Now, this is R2. That's the kernel. Quotient with the images, the images of rank 1, and it's the span of one of these columns. So whatever that is, that's going to be a two-dimensional thing, quotient to one-dimensional thing. So that's going to be isomorphic to R. A particular basis for that could be 1, 1, for instance. Okay. Now what about up here? Well, let's see here. What's the kernel of this? Module of the image, well, the image is nothing, so what's the kernel of this matrix? Well, the kernel of this matrix is one-dimensional because it's rank one, so this is one-dimensional. And it's useful to choose a basis for this. This is the span of, let's see here, the span of what particular thing? Let's, whatever's in the kernel, that would be a one minus one, or a minus one plus one. Now, this one here would be the, the <clears throat> would be the orthogonal complement of this. This is the span of one one. Okay, moving right along to this space here, this is <clears throat> a rank two matrix. Well, this is going to be R four modulo R one. This is R four modulo R two rather, which is R two. And this guy here, this is an R3 modulo R2. Which is going to be an R. Now you can ask them what is the appropriate spans of, or what, what, what's a good basis for this? Well, this is a basis for the kernel. That's going to be something like a 1 minus 1, 0, 0. And the other, basically wipe out the whole works here. So if you like, this can be span of 1 minus 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1 minus 1. All right. Now, that's getting a little cramped, so let me clean it up a little bit and write down just in terms of the basis what's going on, because we'll want that for induced maps in a moment. So this is 0 and R. Let me just write them out in terms of the spans that we've got going on here. This is R equals span of 1 minus 1. This is span of 1, 1. And 
This one here is the span of 1 minus 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1 minus 1. Now what about down here? This one here I didn't write down. Well, this is, this is R3 modulo all this stuff. What does this rank 2 space look like? Well, once I'm done forming this thing, it's going to be a, a orthogonal complement. This is a one-dimensional space. It's an orthogonal complement to the image of this. We just put down an R for the moment. It doesn't actually matter the choice of bases, but in fact, actually I'm write, write down it. A good basis for this. Span of 1, 1. 1 is a decent choice for that. And you can see that this, this particular guy here is that orthogonal to the is that in the orthogonal complement? Well, if I take a look at the dot product of this column with this, you'll see it is 0 and similarly there. 0 and R. Okay. So that's the summary of what the situation looks like on homology. Now I'm going to fill out for you the induced maps. And the way that I'm going to do that is by building out the chain map at this level. So let's take a look at the chain map. What's that going to be? Well, they're going to be maps going this way. Of course, this is a zero map, nothing to do there. Another zero map, nothing to do there. <clears throat> now, at this particular one and this particular one, all of these we need to now fill out. All right, so this is a two by one matrix. It tells you where the vertices over here go to the vertices over there. Well, what's, what's happening is vertex zero goes to vertex zero and vertex one is not touched. Over here, I have two vertices in and three out. Here, all three vertices get mashed into one vertex. So this is the only one remaining. This is a 2 by 4 matrix. This is telling me now on the level of edges, E0, E1, E2, and E3, in terms of these two edges, E0 and E1. Well, E0 goes to E0, E1 goes to E1. That's pretty clear, and nothing else happens. Okay, here we are. Okay. <clears throat> so now what we want to do is we want to see what happens to these particular spaces using that particular set of chain maps. So if I multiply this particular basis by here, it's, this is a one-dimensional basis, so you can ask yourself, what kind of induced map now needs to happen down here? Well, this is a one-dimensional space. This is a one-dimensional space. If I ask, where does this particular one-dimensional basis end up? And I multiply it by that map there. Where does it go? Well, it doesn't seem to go into this, does it? Hmm. That seems to be kind of bad. Um, but remember, everything is kind of fit together, isn't it? So this is, this is really all that's going on here, is we're going to end up with maps this way in our induced maps. This particular map here doesn't appear to take me into this space. But remember, this is a quotient. This is, this is a, 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 I have many choices for what this can be. So th this particular map here, turns out it's rank 1 anyway. This map is a little easier to see. Take this vector, multiply it, I only have one vector, multiply it by this matrix, and what do I get? Oh, well, I get this first one. So this, this map here, this is a 2 by 1, and this looks like a map like that. So really, all that's happening here is I get, <clears throat> on the level of first degree homology, I have a, a sequence that looks like 0, maps into a one-dimensional space, maps into a two-dimensional space injectively, which maps to, back to a zero. And on the level of, <clears throat> of zero-degree homology, um, it just basically passes through. So if I try to write barcodes, what do they look like? Well, this is a one-dimensional barcode the whole way through. If I look at the barcodes up here, I got nothing. Something shows up. 
but it doesn't exercise everything, and then both of them die off before they get to here. So that's the barcode representation at degrees 1 and 0. Now, if we wanted to write this in terms of the <coughs> polynomials, we can do that. Do that. How do we do that? Pretty easily. We just focus on a single complex for the whole space. Now, this only works for filtrations. So, in this particular problem, this is not a filtration. So, if we're looking at that, let me alter the problem and throw out this last map. And if you look at the homework problem I was talking about, this is the filtration we're looking at. And in this case, you ask, in total, how many edges are there? So in C1, C0, how many edges in total are there? There are four. And this is R, T now, four. How many vertices are there in total? In total, there are three. And no two cells ever. So the matrix that you're going to put here is a now, on the level of modules, it is now a <clears throat> 3 by 4, as before, in this particular slot here, but not as before in the other slots. Okay, so now let's fill them out. V0 does indeed bump into V1 and comes in with a... Uh, these, yeah, V0 these bumps into... I've labeled my edges wrong. There we go. V0 does indeed bump into E1 with a minus, here with a plus 0, and similarly minus plus 0. And what's going on over here? E2 and V0 do interact with a plus a 0 here and a minus, plus a 0 here and a minus. So now I just need to fill these in with either t, various t to the k's. Now, I ask, when does V0 show up versus E0? V0 shows up here. E0 shows up here. There's a difference in time of 1. Now, what about E1? Same deal. What about E2? Well, there's a difference in 1, 2 time slots. And similarly here. Now, what about V1? V1 shows up at the same time E0 does. And also the same time as E1 does. And similarly, V2 shows up at the same time that the other one does. So this, then, is your boundary map in this particular chain complex. Now, the key step, of course, is row reducing this thing or column reducing this thing. If you column reduce it, if you column reduce this, this particular matrix, well, this row is the same as that row, or rather, this column is the same as that column. And this column is the same as that column. And that wipes out those columns, and you're left with this particular matrix as your final matrix that's describing what's going on. Okay.